welcome to another week with author E. Jamie. Um, today is sort of an, I don't know what I'm going to do today, because it was supposed to be a nice, like, 10 degrees, and um, I was looking forward to, if the weather was nice, going to uh, check out the Old Mill neighborhood and sort of walk around there. Well, it was 10 degrees this morning for about an hour, and now it's like two. Two and like with a wind chill of like minus six or something. And, and um, it rained all night. So I had a crappy night's sleep because I am not one of those people who are relaxed by the sound of rainfall. I hate it. I hate when it rains because it does not relax me. It keeps me awake. So I was like in and out, maybe slept like an two, three hours at a time. And then I'd wake up and then I would take me forever to fall back asleep because it was raining. And I'd fall asleep another for another two, three hours, wake up again, take forever to fall asleep because it was raining. And it was just awful. I hate when it rains. Um, and so it's about noon right now because, of course, my sleepy, my crappy night's sleep made me wake up around 1030. Where um, 1030, it was almost like 11. And whereas, like, I usually, I usually try to wake up around 9, 839. But because of my crappy night's sleep, I slept late. Uh, so the day is already like half gone, and I'm so annoyed by that. Um, add to that um, that I think it's only starting to stop raining now. But uh, the news says that the wind is picking up and its temperature is dropping. So I don't know. I don't. I won't know until like I get outside if. It's comfortable enough for me to go exploring in the old mill neighborhood. I might just do uh, the path this week. And um, I think I mentioned last week there's this uh, sort of like concourse, uh, sort of connecting the subway routes in a section of the underground that I'm not exactly sure how long it is. I'm gonna like Google it and see. But uh, it's sort of like a underground shopping concourse. And there's uh, that uh, I heard about from another uh, booktuber that I watch, Emmy, Emmy Reads. Um, and she is, uh, was talking about how she went there uh, a week or two ago. And uh, I was like, I know that place. But I never like knew like sort of, like I know that it was like at least from like one subway station to another subway station I knew it was that long I didn't know like if it's longer than that I think it is I think it's and I think she mentioned it was one of the longest underground or so one of the longest like shopping concourses in North America so I was like let me check that out and she also mentioned that there were books there is a bookstore or, or bookstores along that path, which we definitely want to check out. So, depending on how the weather is outside, I might either do that or I might go to the Old Mill neighborhood. Um, I have not finished, I have not finished my telenovela yet. I had one episode to go, but, um, Time kind of sort of got away from me last time, and um, I ended up uh, kind of busy doing like other things, so I didn't get to finish the last episode. I'm hoping to do that today, but I'm also planning to do my book wrap up for the month of November today, so we'll sort of see how that goes. Um, so yeah, gonna. That's going to be an interesting, interesting uh, 
wrap up because and I meant to grab the I always forget to grab things that I want to show you before I start filming. But let me go grab what I'm going to be sort of like the stack that I'm going to be talking about. In this might be the biggest stack of books that I've ever discussed in a book wrap up in the history of my channel. <laughs> However, most of them sadly are DNFs. I just want to show you this is one bit. Uh, I don't want to knock stuff down, but okay. Stuff is falling! This is next bit. This is the last bit. I will discuss be discussing all these books in <laughs> this month's wrap up. Um, and I think maybe only one or two are ones that I actually loved. So most of them are sadly are DNFs. So um, it might be either a very long wrap up this month. Or it might be a shorter one this month. Depends on how much I want to go into the DNFs. What I am reading right now is a book that I am adoring beyond measure. And I am halfway through. And I am loving it so much that if I encounter a bookstore today, I am getting the next book in the series. Without fail, I need to have the next book in the series ready to go before I finish this book. And it is. Y'all. Y'all. I love this book so much. I cannot even. I adore this book. I. It is so. If you don't know, Anne of Green Gables is a, I would qualify it as a middle grade, which I don't usually read. However, Anne of Green Gables is a classic that um, I couldn't remember if I'd read as a child. I don't think I've read it. I've always been aware of it. And I remember watching bits and pieces of the, uh, movie with Megan Follows and Jonathan Crombie, who played Gilbert Blythe. Gilbert Blythe in this book. He is everything. That young boy. And ha if you don't know, Anne of Green Gables is a story of a orphan girl named Anne Shirley who um, mistakenly comes to be um, adopted by this uh, elderly brother and sister, Marilla and Matthew Cuthbert. And they originally wanted to adopt a boy to help around the farm, around their farm. But there was a mix up and they accidentally get sent a girl. And the, the guy, the elderly brother, Matthew, instantly takes a liking to her. And Marilla, the sister, is um, more like, you know, we need a boy. Like, what are we going to do with a girl? Like, like, she can't help, blah, blah, blah. But Anne wins her over, too. And so they end up keeping her. And she changes their lives for the better. And she goes to school, and she's very self-conscious about her red hair. And there's this boy, Gilbert Blythe, who... And you read that he instantly is taken with her. But he's a 14-year-old boy. So he is a stupid. And he, the way he likes to get girls' attention, he likes to get rises out of them. And it's sort of, it's his love language <laughs> to tease. So he 
grabs one of Anne's braids and starts calling her carrots because of the red hair. This is the worst way he could have gone about getting this girl's attention. And so she vows that she is going to despise him until the day she dies. And, but he likes her so much that when she breaks a slate over his head, he takes responsibility for it and says that it's his fault. And he keeps trying to be her friend and like get her to forgive him. But she is a 12 year old girl who has been humiliated. <laughs> Anne is so extra. Anne is like, think of like the most extra 12 year old girl you know, the most dramatic times 100. That's Anne. And just the writing is just so cozy and beautiful that it's just. I take this book to work with me. I wasn't going to because I usually don't take my classics with me because I like to, when I annotate them, like when I'm at home. But I couldn't let go of this book. I couldn't leave this book at home and read another one at work because I, I wanted to maintain this feeling that this book gives me is perfect for when you're at work. And if you're ever like feeling anxious or stressed, pick up this book. It is like a shot of dopamine or like serotonin or like being wrapped in like the coziest blanket with a cup of tea just the writing style is just gorgeous and i just let me see if i can like because i i like i love like the writing style and just there's like i underline like so many like lines that i love For example, her descriptions are gorgeous. The berry garden was a bowery wilderness of flowers which would have delighted Anne's heart at any time less fraught with destiny. She's so extra. It was encircled by huge old willows and tall firs beneath which flourished flowers that loved the shade. Prim, right angled paths neatly bordered with clamshells intersected it like most moist red ribbons, and in the beds between old-fashioned flowers ran riot. There were rosy bleeding hearts and great splendid crimson peonies, white fragrant, fragrant narcissi and thorny sweet scotch roses, pink and blue and white columbines and lilac tinted bouncing bets, clumps of southern wood and ribbon grass and mint, purple Adam and Eve daffodil, purple Adam and Eve daffodils and masses of sweet clover, white with its delicate fragrant Feather, feathery sprays, scarlet lightning that shot its fiery lances over prim white musk flowers. A garden it was where sunshine lingered and bees hummed with winds, beguiled into loiter, loitering, purred, purred and rustled. I mean, I just... <sighs> Anne said no more until they turned into their own lane. A little gypsy wind came down it to meet them, laden with the spicy perfume of young dew, wet ferns. I just... Just beautiful, beautiful writing! It was broad daylight when Anna woke and sat up in bed, staring confusedly at the window through which a flood of cheery sunshine was pouring and outside, was pouring, and outside of which something white and feathery waved across glimpses of blue sky. I mean, I just, oh, this book, I can't, I can't even enough. So that's what I'm reading right now. And um, if I go to the past, and I encounter a bookstore, I am definitely going to get uh, another Anna, the next one, the next one in the series. Um, 
And I was debating whether to do that, and then maybe if I don't, maybe I'm going to go to type books tomorrow or Friday. I think Friday's payday. <laughs> but um, what I'm planning to get is the second Anne of Green Gables, um, another uh, Karen White, who she wrote The Lost Hours, which I have talked about here on my channel, which wrecked me. That book was beautifully heartbreaking. And um, another Kate Morton. So those are the three that I'm sort of on the lookout if I see a uh, bookstore on my uh, trip today. So that's sort of where we are. Um, so when I get back, I will be doing my wrap up, my book wrap up for the month of November. And uh, I think because we got a late start, that's probably going to be it. I'm just going to relax for the rest of the day. Yeah, and hopefully get to the last episode of that uh, telenovela. So I will talk to you guys later and see sort of where I'm going. <laughs> I don't know yet. I'll know when I get outside. Talk to you later. it's around four o'clock right now um, and uh, so it took me a while to go and uh, come back um, the path so I went and um, I only like I know that like I only got like a bit of it I know that there was so much more uh, to see but um, I saw like maybe like two, maybe like one or two subway stops worth of like that connection of uh, shops and stuff. And um, I liked it, but I know that there's like still like so much more. So we'll save that for another day. Um, but yeah, it was, it was cute. It was really cool. Um, there was this uh, old, not old, but this, like this um, Portuguese shop in there with like different like Portuguese dishes, uh, like actual like dishes. I don't mean like food, um, but like actual like plates and like stuff like that. And um, but I don't know if it's because it was the area. I mean, like Union and like Bay and like that whole like section Front Street. That's all like sort of the. Uh, the suit area of like sort of like the financial um district and all that stuff and um the prices were like insane like there was uh in this portuguese shop they had a candle uh a regular like bath and body work size candle maybe even smaller for 46 dollars in no way shape or form would i ever pay 
46 dollars for a godforsaken candle if i were going to pay 46 dollars for a candle it had better smell like sam hewan <laughs> jamie fraser um which i believe they have those but um yeah no and um they had like in this portuguese shop they had like the um you know those like little tuna fish or like those little fish um cans of fish that they sell in like either like the tomato sauce or um olive oil or whatever they had them selling there that i can get in my freaking fresco or like food basics for like a dollar something they had them in this little portuguese shop on in union station for three dollars how dare you just no um but yeah it was sort of like shops like that very um kind of upscale hoity-toity shops but they did have an indigo in a connected shop there through like the royal bank plaza and i got i got two books um one of them was not on what i was supposed to go get but i got it because it was on sale for eight dollars and yes indeed <laughs> um and i wanted to read you know because i have uh if you've been following me you know that i've been watching the films and uh this was actually my least favorite of the films and um but i want to read the book because maybe if i read the book i'll have a different opinion um i have the cuckoo's calling uh after because that was the first one that i saw and i really really enjoyed that one um and then i saw they had this one for eight dollars so yes ma'am um because we all know hardcovers they yeah originally 38 dollars and even better because stay there oh and i also got as i was intending to i got kate morton's the clockmaker's daughter love kate morton love her book love it love it so much and i'll go more into that when i do the book haul for that um oh and i actually forgot to show that downstairs in my apartment lobby sometimes they will like leave like books and stuff on uh the, a, t a little table there and yesterday i got this the, the reader's digest encyclopedia of healing therapies that was there in the lobby so i grabbed it um now i am a all the advil all the uh, all the drugs give me all the drugs when i'm not feeling well <laughs> but i always find like different like home remedies and stuff i find that stuff interesting um and then but they didn't have my anne of green gables they didn't have well let me rephrase that they had anne of green gables the first one which that's the only time that, that has happened with book series they never have the first one they always have like the latest one in the series or whatever in the case of being great green geek Green Gables would be like the last book in that series that they would have. But no, they had the first one, not any of the other. Dear bookstore library people, if a book is part of a series, it should be a rule that you sell the entire series, that you keep that series on your shelf in its entirety. But this indigo they did not have it so i thought okay i could either wait and maybe go to uh like a different bookstore on like maybe friday go to like type books that i was intending to go to um because it was either like that or um do like the path today so i did the path but they didn't have second one so i was like okay maybe i'll go to type books on friday but 
coming home, it was like one degree with a wind chill of like minus six or something like that. And it was hella windy and hella cold. Crazy, crazy windy. But I thought, okay, I'm at the subway. The thrift store is like right there. Let me go. See. Oh, first of all, let me tell you the at the Indigo, it was the clockmaker's daughter was full price. But I'm I have their club card, so I get like a ten percent discount. It was what were you? Twenty four ninety nine. Do I have the receipt in here? Let me see. I guess I do. So yeah, it was twenty four ninety nine. Um, uh, my price would have been twenty two. And um, the Lethal White was $8 um, sticker price, but with my 10% membership, I uh, only paid $7.20. However, so the total came to $31.17. However, I had, and I did not know that I had this many points because I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't checked, but um, I did, I had, Twenty dollars worth of points. So I only paid for those two books eleven seventeen. So again, people, if you're at a store that you know that you shop at all the time, and you know me and my books, get their club card, get their points card. It is worth it. And stop with the I don't want the stores knowing my phone number. Blah, 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 blah. They already know it. If you pay with credit card or uh, any kind of card, they already have that information. You getting their club card is not, or not getting their club card is not going to keep them from getting that information. Okay, okay. Uh, but yeah, so I didn't find the second Adam Green Gables book there, but it was the thrift store that's like by my subway. On my way back and um when i got to the subway i got out and i thought okay let me go see let me go see if the thrift store has the second book and they did and i so happy not overly fond of this cover but i'm still so happy i got book two anne of avonlea i cannot wait I cannot wait to, yeah, cannot wait to continue with this series. Um, and because I like my, um, my injury is at work. It's sort of like the first couple of hours. I'm good for the majority. I'm good. It's getting better, it's getting a lot better. I'm good. And, but then like the last hour, I hit that wall and it's just, I'm, I'm limping again and my back is hurting and it's just, my, my body is just not a, a, acclimated, no, accustomed. One of those two words is what I mean to, uh, working, standing on my feet for those hours again. And, uh, today, like between like walking around like the path and stuff, walking to and like all that stuff I walked for about three four hours didn't feel like that long but it was and so and yeah like I'm it's like it's almost dark out it winter in in Toronto and so like the lighting is like really really starting to fade um so I got that and I thought that I would try and get some more cushiony comfortable running shoes um and <laughs> 3.99 3 <laughs> my thrift store was so happy and so i got this and that at the thrift store and what was it i think it was like six six something together but i had a coupon i had a two dollar off coupon because i did their survey now admittedly surveys they take a bit of time or whatever but you know what if you have the time anyway like if you have like a minute or two spare you're at home whatever it 
you know, it's an, an extra $2 off. So a not showing me the what the original price was. It was six something, but like with tax and everything. And then I got the $2 off. Uh, so I only paid for this and the book $3.96. These shoes themselves were $3.99. Mm -hmm. So that was a good, today was a good shopping day, let me just say. So, I, you, the lighting is like really turning to crap right now, so I do not think that I am going to do my wrap up today. And it is like 4.30 right now. I just, no, I'm just going to get something to eat and just sort of relax for the rest of the day. Because I'm, I'm not one of those people who like, has like the fancy cameras and the ring lights and all that stuff and just yeah your girl ain't, ain't got ain't got the um inclination nor the funds for that just yet may i don't know if i will because it just seems like i don't know booktube and like all these like other like vlog channels seem like so like a production uh now it's not so much vlogging like actual like genuine like vlogging it seems more like um a production now like i like sort of being on here on my like webcam i might get like a nicer webcam because this one um i don't like that i have to use my um my editing software like this webcam didn't come with its own software i like the logitech a webcam better because it comes with its own software that I can like record using that. Um, so that would be like mostly like right now the only change I plan on doing. But yeah, that's sort of where we are with like that. And I like sort of like doing it like this where it's like just regular chatting to the camera. Uh, some showing you guys like places like that I've been uh with my you know just my phone phone camera um and yeah I, I just it's I'm I'm not that girl I'm not that booktube production girl I don't know what maybe I'll change my mind and be that in the future but as of right now I'm just yeah the, it's Toronto, it's 4.30, December starts tomorrow, this is the lighting that you get. Cheers. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. So today is going to be a definite stay at home day today because it is minus 11 outside today and I don't feel like going out in that. Um, so today will be the day that I will be staying at home, cleaning up around here, doing my book wrap up for the month of November. Uh, we are starting December today, December 1st today, and um, we're in the thick of the Christmas preparation season. Um, I am very, very happy to mention that at my evil day job, we have not, as of yet, started Christmas music. I have been to some stores where it was like the beginning of November and they were already starting the Christmas music. Stop it. I used to like Christmas music, but working retail in places that would start it pretty much as soon as Halloween was over and hearing nothing but Christmas music until January or yeah I would even say they they would milk it through New Year's until January 1st has made me and most retail people despise Christmas music so 
I am very happy to say that my April day job has not. I don't know if when I go back on Saturday they will have started. But at least, you know, December is a decent month to start the Christmas music in that month, not no earlier. If If I had it my way, there would be no Christmas music until the week of Christmas. And that would be it. But um yeah, so I I just wanted to mention I forgot to mention this yesterday, but um when I was getting home, like after I uh, took the subway to my subway stop, and I was thinking, because it was getting uh, chillier, and I'd gone to my thrift store and got my shoes and the book two in the Anne of Green, Anne of Green Gables series, uh, and as soon as I was coming out, I missed, they came together, which of course never happens, but only would happen when I would want to take the bus home. Uh, there are two buses that serve my route home. And of course they came together and I missed them. As as soon as I was like walking towards, like they just yeah. So I was like, okay, I'll I'll wait like sort of like in the subway for the next bus. And um it was getting like a little bit busier because it was um almost four. It was like three something and school was starting to let out and uh it was getting a little busier and the bus that said that it was going to be at the time never showed up i'm guessing one of the two buses that i saw was that bus that was just early and just decided to just pass there like all together and just like not come at the right time freaking ttc um <laughs> some people they called TTC stands for take the car um but so the bus never came and then wasn't gonna come until like so that I was like okay I'm gonna wait for the next bus but like my back was like really starting to hurt at that point so I went down to like the the the, the lower level of the subway where they had uh, seats and so I sat down for a few minutes and I came back up and I noticed that the, the crowd on the a platform on the sidewalk waiting for the bus was getting bigger and 90% of it of the crowd was like loud obnoxious teenagers now I know that I'm like getting older because I didn't want to deal with that shit I did not want to be on a crowded bus with loud obnoxious teenagers like I'm sorry I don't remember, like, I wasn't like that when I was a teenager. I just, I know that I wasn't, but I just, so I was like, okay, I have a choice to make. <laughs> Again, the subway to my street, it is walkable. It's about like a 20 minute walk. At the time, I was like, it's colder? starting to get colder my back is hurting I don't I had to make a choice do I want to wait for the bus and get on with this multitude of madness or do I just want to walk it so I went back downstairs sat for a little while and at that point I was starting to feel a little better my back was feeling better so I was like screw it I'm, I'm not getting on this with this mob of insanity I'm just walking so I walked but that just like yeah i'm i'm at the point where i just really don't i don't want to be like around like big crowds of people i really don't um so i just i ended up walking home now today another uh late sort of wake up i don't know if it's like like what like it's taking me like longer to fall asleep and then, like, I just wake up, like, later than I want to. And that's sort of, the day kind of gets away from me. And that happened yesterday, and that's happened today again. And I don't know why. It's very annoying. 
because I want I want to do stuff. But um, so today, yes, I'm doing my wrap up. Yesterday, I finally finished my Brazilian telenovela Amoralha. I liked it. Not one that I would rewatch though. Um, cause the, and it's funny because afterwards they, they have these, like, uh, they had a few like behind the scenes stuff. And so, um, the girl who, <coughs> excuse me, the girl who plays Isabel, like hearing her talk in real life was just, I don't know. She seems like so cool. She seemed like such a cool girl. And, um, I'm, I'm glad that I watched it first before I watched like, I watched the show first before I watched any of, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff. Because I would have found it hard not to like Isabel if I'd seen the stuff with the actress first. Uh, but, I yeah, I just hated, hated this girl. But she um, ended up, the baby that she had with her brother, um, she ended up giving it to... Uh, Chiago and uh, Beatrice to raise, and uh, they, you know, they lived happily ever after, and they had their own baby, and it was great. Um, Anna and uh, the Jewish girl who was being uh, held captive and forced to marry this piece of shit, latest Don Geronimo. Anna and the man that she loved, Graham, he there managed to escape, but he, Don Geronimo, managed to find them, and. Uh, recapture them and was going to basically uh burn them at the stake um and these you know their friends and stuff came to rescue them and <laughs> he like every time somebody would come to like their his door he would like have his soldiers uh, arrest them and throw them in his dungeon because stupid uh government uh in like the city or what have you gave him the power and gave him the soldiers to do all these like terrible horrible things and so it got to the point where like it was almost like comical that like anytime someone came to his door he'd throw them in the jungle in the in the dungeon and that dungeon was getting hella packed but so he he has like these bunch of people and then he he like brings them up and he's gonna like have like a trial for them uh in which case he's going to then sentence them all to be burned at the stake but um and one of them was uh this uh priest who had fallen in love with the indian girl who was anna's only friend in her captivity and unfortunately the indian girl died but uh this priest sort of turned his back on kind of what they were doing there, the, the sort of missionary Christian work that they were doing there and was sort of like, no, this is, this is wrong and I don't want to be a part of it. Um, and so they, he was excommunicated. Um, and so like he was there too in the dungeon and he was going to be um, burned at the stake as well. But the, priest who was giving him such a hard time and who had excommunicated him uh he kind of like saw the light and decided like you know like no this is wrong and like i'm not i'm gonna help you and so he gave um he slipped guilherme a knife and that um then so like then don geronimo gets stabbed but doesn't die um but it's enough for, so that, like, the, the people can, like, get themselves free. And at this point, Don Geronimo has, like, seriously lost his mind. And um, he sees this vision of his father uh, calling towards him. And his reality is so skewed that he doesn't realize that he's walking towards one of the lit pyres. And... So he ends up going into the lit pyre and, and dying. And it, I want to say it was like too good of a death for him, but he, he was set on fire. So, <laughs> um, 
and uh, yeah, I I I liked it. I liked it. Not my favorite, but I liked it. Um, the the lady, the the sort of like the sort of posh kind of uppity lady, uh, Donna Antonia, Lady Antonia, was my favorite character. Um, the most interesting story story ended up being with of uh, that young girl uh Ros Rosalita and the um guy who was Don Geronimo's kind of henchman Bento Bento who he tried to mend his ways but it just was not meant to be because when there was the war between um, the Don Geronimo's like government men and soldiers and um, the citizens and Chiago's men who, who actually had claim to the mine because they found the mine and they discovered it and it was theirs. There was a war and uh, Bentu like tried to kind of mend his ways because you know the whole like love changed him and it made him a better man and all this but he just kept making like wrong decisions and it was like he ended up um in a a fight with you know people that he had wronged and it it you know he he was fighting them and then it, it became like a thing of like self-defense and so he ended up killing the patriarch, which I was not mad about because I hated that old man. And um, he ended up killing the guy who uh, had gotten burned, the husband who um, was thought to be dead, but who had really gotten burned and disfigured. and. Be, like uh, all that stuff happened because of Bantu so of course when the guy saw him he like went straight for him and was like trying to kill him and revenge for like what was done to him justified but Bent Bantu was like you know he was trying to change but guy comes at you and he's trying to kill you you defend yourself and he ended up killing the guy so a lot of people died in that war um and but uh, Chiago and his um, men kind of like won. And um, so, and Rosalita, like Bento ends up um, dying. Who kills him? I, I don't remember who kills him. Oh, wait, yeah. Uh, so he comes. He comes after the war's over. He comes and um, he pulls a uh, Stella outside of <laughs> Rosalita's house, and uh, the wife of the disfigured guy that he killed uh, shoots him in the head, and Bantu dies. And it's funny because Rosalita, like, she knows that he's not a good man, and so she wants nothing to do with him. But it doesn't stop her from loving him. Like, she loved this man, even though he was made all these bad choices. And it was just, yeah, when, when he died, like, she, she grieved over him. She grieved over him. So I thought there, like, Anna and Guilherme were my favorite couple. Rosalita and Bantu were the most interesting couple because she spent most of the time away from him and like wanting nothing to do with him, yet still loving him. 
so yeah i again liked it uh not my favorite but it was all right so today i will be starting a spanish telenovela and it's corazon indomable which i think stands like indomitable heart and uh Again, it takes place on some kind of ranch, and there is I'm trying to like translate it in my head from Spanish to Portuguese to English. There it takes place it takes place on a ranch. Family Secrets. <laughs> That's the quick version that I can understand right off uh, without like trying to like take forever to like translate it. But yeah, so that's what we're going to be starting today. Uh, I'm going to be also doing again my book wrap up for today for the month of November. And um, just kind of cleaning up around here. I am past the halfway mark in past halfway mark in Anne of Green Gables. And Matthew just finally gave Anne the dress that she wanted with the buff sleeves. I This book, y'all. This book is so sweet and so like it just puts you in like the best mood, the most like calm, peaceful, just warm blanket cup of cocoa mood. And I'm just, I'm loving it. I'm so loving it so far. And I cannot wait to start book two. But I'm torn. I'm torn because. I have these like books to read here, um, so I I need to get to them, and like I'll see how I feel at the end of this one if I just can't wait to jump into book two, or if I will be good and read from my TBR. Um, and oh, Gilbert Blythe, y'all, this boy, like. He is such a simp for Anne, like, right off the bat. Right off the bat. And she is just not having it at all. She, Anne is so extra. <laughs> he, she has just declared him her, like, mortal enemy and wants nothing to do with him. Even though he's trying to, like, do, like, all these, like, nice things to kind of, like, you know, make up for the cardinal sin of teasing her about her hair. Um, they just did like a Christmas concert thing, and her friend Diana told her, told Anne that like one of the flowers from like the hair, the crown on her head from like the costume came out, came off, and fell, and then and that Gilbert took one of the flowers and put it in his pocket at. This boy, this boy is such a simp for her already. I had no idea. I had no idea that it happened this early. <laughs> um, I just thought that it was something that developed like when they were older. I think that's going to be the case for Anne. But um, yeah, I, I'm so enjoying it. So, so loving it so, so much. Um, so yeah, hopefully going to read more of that. Um. Yeah, so that's going to be the plan for uh, today. Doing my wrap-up, uh, starting in a telenovela, reading more of Anna B. Gables, and um, cleaning up a bit around here. Um, yeah, so I will talk to you guys later. <coughs> she dyed her hair green! <laughs> Dyed her hair green.
mean? So, um, about to head out with my walk. Um, I think today I am going to uh, just sort of go uh, and uh, walk down to um, the library and drop some stuff off. And then just sort of go to the nearby uh, thrift store. Now, the library that I'm going to, um, I haven't walked down to this library since my injury. And I'm, I'm and I, I've sort of, I've walked sort of similar distances and been able to do it. So I think I'm ready to uh, walk down to that library. Um, I'm looking forward to that. The weather is nicer than it was yesterday. Yesterday, I just know I stayed home because it was like minus 11. It said it was like minus, it said it was something like plus three or something, plus two, but no, wind chill was minus 11, so it was minus 11. And, um, I'm not going out there unless you're paying me. Um, so today it's supposed to be, it's supposed to go up to plus eight. But um, looking at the weather it says right now that it's three. So this week, these past couple of days, it's been sort of like, it's plus eight or plus nine or whatever for like a half an hour out of the whole day and then the temperature just plummets so right now it's plus three um and i'm sort of didn't hear anything about any wind chill or anything so i'm sort of glad about that and so i'm sort of dressed uh gonna change and get my layers on and all that um and then i should be okay um so yeah, I'm gonna head out on my walk, go to the thrift store. Um, I might pass by the grocery store to pick up some provisions. Um, and yeah, so yesterday I ended up uh, filming my uh, book wrap up and I did my book haul. Cause I would just sort of, after I finished my book wrap up, I was like sort of still in the mood to film some more, so I did. And so that was a nice, um, productive day. Uh, today I'm going to edit uh, last week's weekly vlog. I'm gonna edit that, put that together, because uh, back to work tomorrow. Um, and I ended up not watching, or I, en I didn't end up getting into the Spanish telenovela that I was uh, going to start, Corazon Indomable, which uh, I think translates to Wild Heart, because I didn't like the hero. He would, I don't know, he was just sort of, he just was, he wasn't likable. And not like likable in that way that like, oh, maybe like he was going to change over time of the novella. Like, I don't know, he was sort of like, he helped the girl out because the girl like she's poor and she lives in a like you know she st has to steal food and all that stuff and she sort of lives in uh, sort of like this very poor kind of area and he is you know he's an a he's the heir to the ranch and so he's rich and all that stuff and he like you get the feel that he was attracted to her but that there was something about like just like the way that like he helped her and like even though like he was attracted to her there was something like condescending about the way that he was with her and he was talking to like his brother and um his brother his brother kind of like teased him about uh, liking her and um 
maybe like it was something like lost in the translation because it was it's Spanish but with like English subtitles. And he said something along the lines of like, oh, uh, please, I am not, I'm not into women like her. I like clean, educated girls. And I, sir? And that just, that just turned me off him. And I was just like, nope, nope, I'm out. Because that's not a... I don't know that that's not a you're you you're one way and then like like I can't explain it but having that kind of opinion that's that's sort of like who you are as a man and I don't want to follow along on your journey where it's going to be like oh maybe i shouldn't judge people by their circumstances or the way they look because they can't afford to um dress better or what have you which i'm sorry they did like a stupid job with trying to make her um seem like dirty or th like this is what she looks like in the show. Like, I'm sorry, she looks like a freaking model. So, they did a shit job on trying to, like, portray her as poor and, like, un unclean and uneducated or what have you. Just, no. And then, uh, I was so disappointed that I didn't end up, because I was so looking forward to this one, Sel with the Pedra. But the problem with this one is because it's a um, shortened version of the original novella, like it's it's heavily edited and they, they pare it down to like 20 something episodes. Um, you have to be careful with the edits that you make because if you cut out too much, you lose the story and you lose key points of development and that kind of stuff. And I think that's what happened here. Because he starts off like this very nice, nice man who's uh, accused of murder, but it was actually self-defense. So he has to like leave and like disappear and go into uh, the city. And um, then like we're talking about like an, an hour and a half in, it's cut to where he is now running, um, he is, like, not, he doesn't have that, that good, honorable sort of air about him anymore, and he's just running con jobs with the, this friend of his, and he's married to the girl that he met at the beginning, and, like, it's portrayed like in the beginning as like a nice sort of like love story that starts because she helps him hide when he's uh when he accidentally kills the man and it, you get the feeling that they, they're they truly like in in love and attracted to each other but like at the wedding like they it sort of makes it seem like oh are you sure you're not just marrying her because you're grateful that she helped you escape and blah 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 and i didn't sort of like that and I don't know I just didn't like the sort of turns that the, that it was taking um and maybe like it would have made more sense if I'd seen like the whole novella play out as it um kind of first aired but with the edits and stuff you just I think you lose too much you lose too much and you're left sort of wondering like why is this happening right now um yeah so sadly that didn't work for me and um yeah so going to head out and in a bit and oh i'm still reading <laughs> i'm still reading and loving and green gables she a, a peddler comes to the door and she buys hair dye from him because he promises that it's going to change her red hair 
to the most beautiful raven black. Well, it didn't. It screwed up her hair and turned it green. So she has to chop her hair all off. Um, yeah, and then um, there's a moment where she's playing with her friends and they they're they put on they're pretending that um she's this fair maiden uh going down the river uh on a boat pretending she's pretending to be dead uh but the boat hits something and uh there ends up being a hole in the boat and it starts filling with water and so the boat starts to sink and she almost drowns but she it manages to grab this um tree trunk or something and hang on and who should happen by on his little rowboat <laughs> to rescue her but her mortal enemy slash future husband Gilbert Blythe that made me so happy <laughs> and she was not the most grateful she was still very sort of cold to him, even though she thanked him, but it was sort of like a begrudging thanks of like, of all people that have to save me. And poor Gilbert Blythe, he tries. He's like, he even says like, I'm really sorry for what I said about your hair. I didn't mean it to be mean. I was just trying to be funny. Can we please be friends now? And she, she sort of feels something, you know, and feels a disturbance in the force, but she fights it and is stiff and cold to him and says, I will never forgive you ever, ever, ever. And then he's like, you know what? F the shit. I'm out. <laughs> he just rose away. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then, and then she actually feels a moment of like, oh, maybe I should have um, accepted his apology. And, you know, she, she feels bad for a moment that she uh, was mean to him. So she, she's, she's fighting it, but she's starting to turn. She's starting to turn towards the GB. She's, she's starting. She's starting. Um, and, yeah, so I'm, I'm, oh, I'm loving this book so much loving it so much and I'm almost done I'm almost finished I might finish it today um yeah I uh, maybe maybe not but I don't we, we shall see um I think yeah so I'm gonna just head out now and um head out to drop stuff at blood library uh thrift store and then pick up some stuff at the grocery so I will talk to you guys later. Just got back from my walk. Um, and I just took a quick uh, shower. And um, the weather was nice. It, it actually, it was colder sort of when I left. And sort of like as I went and then like uh, dropped stuff up uh, at the library. And... Uh, it actually started to uh, warm up, so it's a little bit nicer now, um, and uh, I was okay, like, doing, like, my walk from, like, uh, when I started to down towards uh, the library, but uh, my back kind of started to hurt a bit, and, like, I've sort of noticed, like, that um, a little bit more too. I think it's just like sort of like my body getting used to going to work and like standing for like six, five, six hours um, at a time. Uh, of course, with like uh, breaks, uh, my, you know, the designated sort of breaks in between. But um, after like a month being off, uh, my body's just sort of getting used to uh, standing for those like length of time and so my back has been like really sort of hurting uh, sometimes like more than like my my thigh <laughs> my hip 
uh, which that is sort of like it's still kind of there that but but it's more of sort of like a dull kind of pull slash ache it's not as nowhere near like as intense as it was so that is getting better but um and like I could do the and it felt like lovely and everything but it's just sort of halfway yeah kind of like halfway through my back kind of started to hurt a little bit um, and it's just, I think that just sort of like getting back to like sort of being on my feet, being active um, on my feet um, again. So hopefully that'll fade in the next like few weeks or something. Um, because that's sort of been like the worst part of getting sort of back to work is like that last hour or two where, yeah, my thigh starts to hurt, but it's kind of like my back starts to hurt more. So Still not 100% yet, but it was nice going and uh, dropped stuff up at the library, went to the thrift store, and ended up finding a Christmas present for my mom. So I've got my niece's present done. My niece's present, I ordered it and everything, and I um, was just waiting for that to arrive. But I made sure to order, this year I made sure to order my niece's present first, because this girl, without fail, Every time I order her Christmas present, it doesn't come on time. Every time. So this year I was like, I'm going to order hers first, damn it. <laughs> so it should be here in the next day or two. Um, and then I ended up finding uh, a cute little Christmas present for my mom to uh, I'm gonna send it to her in Portugal because she's in my data now. She's back home and happy as a clam, I assume. <laughs> Well, she tells me that she is, but, um, yeah, so I'm going to be sending that to her. Um, so now I just have to buy my sister's Christmas present and my nephew's Christmas present. Um, one nephew. Uh, then I have another niece and another nephew that I also want to get things for, but, um, I probably won't see them until after Christmas, so... I can like people that I know that I'm going to see before I always want to sort of like take care of them first and then give myself some leeway with people that like I know that I'm not going to see until after uh Christmas so mom's present is done niece's present is on its way and I just have to shop uh I'm probably going to order my sister's Christmas present today very excited about that uh, and then I went to the grocery store and I had to pick up potatoes, milk, and a uh, dish soap. So I picked up that and I got some uh, blackberries because I want to, um, my, my body always knows when sort of like, okay, you need some good stuff in you now, <laughs> but hold that, put a pin in that because let me tell you what I'm, what I got for lunch. But my body, um, yeah, it gets to a certain point where it's like, no, like you need some, some goodness you need some like fruits and you need to up your fruit and vegetable sort of intake my body kind of like lets me know when I'm I'm faltering that I I just yeah you you just feel it um I got blackberries but I was also going to treat myself uh, to lunch since today was payday and I feel like cooking so I was either going to order something and uh with like skip the dishes and have them send it but, uh, you know, I, then I was sort of like, you know what, maybe I'll just like grab something on my way, on my walk and that'll end up being cheaper because with whatever you order and like delivery fee and tip and everything, it, you know, it could run you like 30 something dollars sometimes. Um, so <laughs> I bought blackberries at the grocery store and I bought, I went to A&W and got a burger and fries because they are next to Harvey's. They're my favorite burger place. I do not like McDonald's. The only thing I like for McDonald's is their fries and their McFlurries. And tis not the time for McFlurries. Although there are people who do that and will get ice cream and McFlurries and stuff in the middle of winter. I don't understand you people, but okay. Um. If I'm ever, like, craving ice cream in the winter, I go outside and I get over that craving. Because it's like, I don't want cold things. But some, some people do, and then that's fine. 
But uh, yeah, the only thing I like from McDonald's is their fries and their McFlurries. Burger wise, it's um, Harvey's and A and W. And I there was an A and W next to the library, so I picked up a bacon cheeseburger and fries. And I forgot that I also wanted a uh, gravy, so I didn't get that because I forgot to ask them to. I forgot to order that too. Add that to the order as well. So uh, I'm gonna have lunch in a little bit, but let me show you what I got from the thrift store, minus my mother's gift, just in case she watches this. <laughs> but got some books. They had a good selection of books um, today. The the this uh, thrift store, this particular thrift store, their selection is not always the best. There's another thrift store that um, I go to that uh, they have like a wider, bigger selection of books. But this one has a smaller selection of books and their selection is not always the best, but sometimes it's really good. Today, it was really good. I got Sultana and that is a, it, it kind of looks like a romance novel. Like I thought that it was a romance novel, but maybe it's more of like, I think it was published in 1970-something, and I thought 1983, and it looks like a romance novel, but it's more of like a, I don't know if she was like an actual person, but it was written by, and I thought that it was this woman's love affair with some Prince Michael of Greece. No, Prince Michael of Greece is the author. <laughs> he wrote it. So uh, that's why I sort of, oh wow, the, the, the type is small. Look at that tiny print. Like that is tiny, tiny print. Um, I'm gonna need to up my glasses prescription soon. Um, but yeah, this is more of sort of like a memoir, but if is it a like fictionalized memoir? His love was fated to break her heart, yet it fired her passion to rule as Sultana. And it's about a French girl who gets kidnapped uh, by pirates and then I guess taken to Turkey where, yeah, she becomes a Sultana. Um, so there's that. I got The Second Sex by Simone de Beauvoir. And it's like a, a sort of feminist history, uh, I believe translated from French. And this was a feminist book on feminism. 1949. Wow. Translated in 2009. Oh my goodness. The second sex. Really looking forward to that. Should be very, very interesting. And then I got The Early Diary of an Ace Nin. And this, I don't believe there's any sort of eroticism in here, I don't think, maybe later on, as uh, this is from volume one, and I think I have, I think it's volume two or three that I have, the ones that's from the 1930s, I believe, um, and this, uh, she started at the age of 11, and it goes from 1914 1920. So there might be some like romantic. Oh, there's like pictures of the pages at the end there. Very cool. Very cool. Um, oh, the light is starting to go down. Jeez, three o'clock. That's early. Um, but yeah, this is from 1914 to 1920. So there might be a little um, love stuff towards the end, but uh, yeah, 
looking forward to that. Next we have Edward Rutherford's The Princes of Ireland. I think I read The Rebels of Ireland. I'm not sure. You know, always like to love Edward Rutherford. Looking forward to that. And finally, I found a different, a new, uh, not new, but new to me, Kristen Hanna, Magic Hour. Um, and I, for the most part, love Kristen Hanna. Uh, this one is about a girl who, um, a six-year-old girl who come, who appears out of the forest and nobody knows sort of like what happened to her and where she comes from. And she's, uh, the, like, speechless and alone. Like, is she mute or is she just like in shock? And that's sort of like what happened to her. And so that's Magic Hour. The, and I, I said, like, I've enjoyed almost every Kristen Hanna I've read. Uh, Home Again is one of my favorites, and that's on my keeper shelf. The Nightingale is one of my favorites, and it's on my keeper shelf. The one that I would like to burn with the, pa with the anger of a thousand suns is Firefly Lane. I hated that book. I hated that book so much. And that was even before I knew that, um, oh, what is her name? Katherine Heigl was uh, in the Netflix Netflix show. Not a fan of hers. Um, the only thing that I would have watched her in was uh, The Ugly Truth, and that's because Gerard Butler. Uh, but Magic Hour, looking forward to that. I did not like Firefly Lane. Very, very much not. So that's what I got at the um, thrift store. So I'm going to have, and then I came home, uh, to shower. I'm going to have some lunch now. I'm going to work on editing last week's weekly vlog. And uh, I'm going to read some more. Maybe finish. But I don't, I don't know if I'm going to finish it. Maybe. It could happen. And, um, yeah, just sort of hang out and take it out. Take it easy for the rest of the day. And then back to work tomorrow. So I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.